Hi guys, Nada here and today I'll be taking a quick look at this MSI Radeon RX 6900 XT Gaming Z Trio card and even though I wasn't like super excited to test and review yet another GPU given the current prices and current shortages, there are very few reviews of this particular model and actually very few reviews of MSI Radeon cards in general. But I'm actually glad I did it because there are some very interesting topics to discuss before you consider buying this card, especially when it comes to thermals and noise. So let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. So according to MSI, uh, they're using top tier bin chips for this card. So this should be a Radeon RX 6900 XTXH that is usually found in water-cooled versions. And it should be significantly faster than your typical 6900 XT. Also, uh, they said they actually have a large amount of these cards in stock and they are ready to be sold, or at least that seems to be the situation here in the EU. So you can actually buy one. But keep in mind, even though it will technically cost you half as much as you would have to pay for an RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio, it is still 1750 euros, which is a lot. And it is a great looking card. It has three fans, a pretty large heatsink, and of course, a proper metal backplate. It is 324 millimeters long, almost three slots thick, and it weighs more than 1500 grams. So it is a bulky card that is just impressive all around. Now, my only criticism is the positioning of that cable right in the middle. Uh, it would be much nicer if they moved it somewhere out of sight. The decision to go for three 8-pin power connectors seems a bit odd, considering this is a 300 watt GPU, but if these chips are binned like MSI is claiming, it might make sense for anyone that wants to overclock. You get three display port connections and a single HDMI 2.1 port. Uh, other than that, there's not that much in terms of features. You do get a GPU support bracket, although in most cases this type doesn't really fix the GPU sag, but you might enjoy the way it looks. Uh, you also get a good amount of RGB if you're into that, but it doesn't have a dual BIOS feature and that is something that MSI is keeping for their higher end Supreme line these days. When it comes to raw performance, uh, it actually starts off really well. It boosts its clock speed significantly higher than the reference card or the Gigabyte Gaming OC and it does that at the same roughly 300 watt limit as the other two cards, which definitely confirms a better bind and more efficient chip than the regular 6900 XTs have. Now the memory doesn't seem to be overclocked, unfortunately, but it is something that you could do for yourself. Now these higher clock speeds translate roughly into a 5-7% to increase in frame rates if we look at a couple of games in 4K, where most games will be GPU bottlenecked. And I would say that might not sound like a lot, but for today's standards, uh, getting even 5% more performance from an overclocked card is actually not that bad at all, especially when you consider it uses the same amount of power. On 1440p, we're looking at around 4-5% to increase in performance on average, with some games benefiting a bit more and others a bit less. Unfortunately, I did not have time this time to retest everything on a 1080p resolution, but a card of this class is more meant for 1440p, 4K and certain ultra-wides anyway. The good news is, especially for AMD, that because of that very strong factory OC, this card is now performing roughly on par with the RTX 3080 Ti Founders Edition. As always, some games will benefit NVIDIA a bit more than AMD and vice versa, but overall they actually ended up really close to each other, at least in the games I've tested. I cannot find any Founders Edition 3080 Ti's here in the market, but the cheapest custom card will cost you 2350 euros, which is 600 euros more than this AMD card. Now the 3090 will still be the strongest card out there, uh, but that one will cost you twice as much. Anyway, I'm not going to go into a long discussion about NVENC, Ray Tracing, DLSS, FSR and NVIDIA's new um, image upscaler, NIS, but it is fair 
to bring it up quickly as it is something that you should consider when buying a new graphics card. Now, I really do think that Nvidia still has a clear feature advantage than AMD uh, and AMD just needs to work on it a bit more. Uh, having NVENC as someone who works in Premiere um, is a nice advantage and worth the extra cost, at least for me. And if you stream using your GPU, Nvidia still makes a bit more sense as well. Now DLSS is currently the better upscaling tech too and the main one that I personally found worth using when gaming on a high resolution screen and Nvidia does have stronger ray tracing performance and I would say combination of the two is pretty attractive. But I do know that people's opinions on ray tracing and upscaling will vary wildly, so you have to decide for yourself how much you care about those technologies and if you think they're worth paying for or not. Now, I personally don't think there is a right or a wrong answer here. It is very much so a personal preference. So if you care about ray tracing, you go for Nvidia's RTX cards. If you don't care for it and you would rather save some money, AMD makes just as much sense. Besides, you shouldn't really need upscaling with this card, uh, at least not yet, because most current and upcoming games should run perfectly fine without it, even on a 4K resolution. Now, I've compared it to the reference card and the Gigabyte Gaming OC that I've tested before, and here is where it gets pretty interesting. So remember that all of these cards roughly consume the same amount of power and create roughly the same amount of heat that they need to deal with. A solid 750 watt power supply should realistically handle any of these GPUs combined with a high-end CPU. But if we look at the core temperatures of the GPUs under stress, MSI's larger cooler seems to do exceptionally well, keeping this GPU nicely under 60 degrees, with Gigabyte trailing by around 10 degrees and the reference card by almost 18 degrees. But when we add a hotspot or junction temperature to the graph, it suddenly looks very very different with the MSI card reporting the highest hotspot temperature of the three. Now technically uh, anything under 110 degrees is within spec and AMD has repeatedly said that these sort of temps are fine but to me it still feels like it shouldn't have to be this high on a card with a cooler of this size. Now fortunately other sensors all report good temps so those are completely fine but still. The MSI is also hitting these temps with significantly higher noise levels and I suppose that that's happening because the fan curve is reacting to that hotspot temperature. So 45 decibels is a lot more audible than the 38 or 40 I measured with the other two cards. Now you probably won't care about the noise if you game with a headset, but it is definitely something to keep in mind and I would say it's very surprising. I didn't expect it to be this noisy because most of the recent MSI cards that I was able to test are usually exceptionally quiet. Now when normalizing the noise levels to 40 decibels from a 50 centimeters distance, the negative effect on thermals is actually pretty small. Now 40 decibels is what I consider okay for everyday use, uh, when you can just hear it but it shouldn't bother anyone. And even with that much lower noise level, the core temps are still lower than the other two cards, so the cooler design clearly has a lot of potential to get the heat out of the chip, while the hotspot temperature went up only a tiny bit. I still don't like that high number personally, but a less than two degree increase should not be a big deal considering a five decibel reduction. Now the reason behind these results probably has something to do with uh, MSI's decision to use direct touch heat pipes instead of a cold plate for this design, as that could negatively affect thermals in some parts of the chip while still being strong otherwise. It also matches some of the other reports that I've found online, so this seems to be very much so the part of the design and not a thing that is sample related. I've also spoken to MSI about this and their response was the same as AMD had said before, so the hotspot temps below 110 are within spec and completely fine and that is not something to worry about. And many high-end Radeon cards are pushing those sort of hotspot temperatures as well. But having said that, I would feel a bit more comfortable if they were lower and I really want you to be aware of this, especially if you plan to buy this card, overclock it and push it even further. 
So is this the card that you should be buying? Now, the bad news is that even with a relatively good price, it is still a ridiculous amount of money for a graphics card. And the only reason to even consider spending this much is because you just desperately need or desperately want to buy one at this point. Now this card is also pretty loud out of the box, so you need to be prepared to download MSI Afterburner to manually tune the fan curve to your own liking. And you also want to keep an eye on that hotspot thermal, even if they are technically within spec. But the good news is that while being very, very expensive, it is actually in stock, or at least where I live, and it will cost you less than any 3090, 3080 Ti, and even 3080 that I can find. And this card uh, will be faster than the regular 6900 XTs, and it will obviously play any game well on Quad HD and 4K resolution. I cannot really recommend buying any card at this point of time, and you really have to uh, decide for yourself considering all the things that I talked about today, what fits you best and then choose based on that. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope uh, that this video was helpful, at least a bit. If you liked it and if you want to see more, uh, please click the subscribe button to never miss an upload. Bye guys and see you in the next one.